Good morning, folks. Good morning, all. Um, grandfather clock is going off, so it must be that time. Hi, my name is Casey Durango of Go Keto with Casey, and I have lost 90 pounds on the ketogenic diet, and I like to talk with other people about how they may be able to lose weight. improve their health and regain control of their lives. For those of you who don't like the sound of a cuckoo clock or have misophonia and just don't like certain sounds at all, I do apologize. But it's my cuckoo. I love my cuckoo. And my grandfather clock. So anyway, today we're going to be talking about um, things that have come up often, I will say. And excuse me as I adjust a couple of things on my screen. My, um, my crack editing staff um, couldn't come in today, and that is uh, me being facetious. I do not have a crack editing staff, so bear with me just one moment as I do a couple of things on my screen. But what we're going to talk about today is um, topics that come up frequently uh, it, it, with new people, with people who've been doing it a long time, just in general, out of general curiosity about the ketogenic diet. Quick, a uh, quickie for those of you who are unfamiliar. The ketogenic diet is one in which your body burns fat for fuel rather than glucose or sugar for fuel. The fat coming from ketones, hence ketogenic. Um, it is um, a very elegant way of eating, and your body is very happy doing this. And how do you start burning fat for fuel? You reduce your carbohydrate intake to a level um, at which your Liver does not pump out glucose for fuel, and so we'll happily switch to burning fat for fuel. If anyone wants to let me know, I always kind of wonder, because there's a bit of a time delay, can you guys hear me? Can you see me? Is everything moving along, or does it look really weird? Thank you. So, so that's that. Reduce your carbohydrate intake. You, for almost everybody, that point, will you will find success switching from burning glucose for fuel to burning fat for fuel at 20 total grams of carbohydrate a day or fewer. There can be some variation in that depending on who you are, your gender, your age, your size, your activity level, your level of insulin resistance, if any. So just keep that in mind. But as a general rule, 20 total grams a day or fewer will get you where you want to be. Now, um, you know, we've been taught the opposite of almost all of this. All of our lives. And not only all of our lives, all of our parents' lives. And I'm old. All of my mother's life, she was taught the opposite. Certainly as a young mother, you know, trying to get food on the table for her quickly growing brood. I'm one of seven children. Um, you know, it was fill them up. Feed them fast, and five sons, by the way. You know, it was always have two or three vegetables on the plate, brightly colored. Uh, make sure you have rice and or potatoes and or pasta and something like this. It was just, you know, we weren't taught the correct way. And it really got off the rails when the food pyramid, the food recommendations came out in the 60s and 70s really went bad. Um, but anyway, we're, many of us are concerned because what the ketogenic diet recommends is so opposite of what we've been taught. What medical providers have been taught, what nutritionists have been taught, what dietitians have been taught. And believe, many believe it firmly, that you must have you know, 60% of your calories coming from carbohydrate. Um, you must get in five servings of fruit and veg a day. I think that's a little bit more British than it is from the U.S. Um, and excuse me, I am frozen, not frozen actually, but my screen is frozen. So I'm going to refresh my screen. I hope I don't lose everybody. Um, but keep in mind that a lot of these recommendations came from industries that really wanted you to buy their product the fruit and veg in, uh, you know, industries, grain-growing states. One of the first questions that comes up is what about vegetables? You've got to get in your vegetables. Well, you don't really. 
Uh, on, the, on a well-formulated ketogenic diet, if you are keeping your, excuse me, you still there? Is everyone still there? Because it totally froze out on me. Y'all still there? Honestly, I can't see anything. And I apologize for this. This is the wonder of live television. Can someone shout out? Still there? Okay. Still here. Okay, great. Everything I'm doing is frozen, so I'm just, I'm on I'm, I'm autopilot. Um, you must get in vegetables. What if, how do you, where do you get your fiber if you're not eating vegetables? Um... How do you keep going, if you get what I mean, you know, about the constipation, without vegetables? Vegetables come up a lot. Plus, there are those people saying you must have a minimum of X number of cups of leafy greens a day. Incorrect. It's simply incorrect. Um, and it's difficult to keep your carbs 20 grams or fewer a day if you're eating minimum multiple cups of leafy greens a day. I just looked on the USDA database. One cup of shredded romaine has 1.55 carbs. That's not much. So if you do it by weight, it's about a gram of carbohydrate per ounce of lettuce. So if you eat seven cups of it, you're at 10, nearly 11 grams of carb right there just in leafy greens. Anyway, carbohydrate is not an essential nutrient. Protein is. Fat is. Carbohydrate is not. Um, be, why is it not? Because we can manufacture our own. Essential nutrients are those which your body cannot produce on their own. N not to be confused with, yes, we obviously can produce fat. We, fat is created from what we eat. But we, our body won't make the fat out of whole cloth without the correct conditions going on. Our body can create glucose through the process of gluconeogenesis, which is happens all the time, and your body's perfectly capable of doing this. So for whatever glucose needs your body and brain have, body can make it on its own. Um, and as far as the other question about the fiber, how do you keep going smoothly? I have no issues. And let me tell you something. If there are a couple of nuanced things here, constipation is not just not pooing as often as you used to. Constipation is pain and inability to poo when you really need to poo. That's a different story. But just going less frequently, think about it. If your food is more efficient, it is producing less waste, literally. So you may find that you go less when you when your appetite is suppressed. Um, then you go less. You eat less, you go less. And also, keep in mind that you may have encountered constipation when you were a sugar burner. Lots of things change when you become a fat burner. Everything from getting off of asthma inhalers to joint pain diminishing to no more acid reflux. Think of all these things that happen when you're a, compared, you know, you go from being a sugar burner to being a fat burner, and all sorts of things change. So don't take for granted that if you have suffered from constipation previously as a sugar burner, that you will as a fat burner. Um, and, and it's okay. If you like veggies, eat the veggies. Just realize that almost all of your carbohydrate will come from vegetables. So they're not unlimited. Contrary to what many of us believed, you know, you could have a Jethro Bodine-sized bowl of salad, and it didn't matter. It's like it was free food. Well, it's not, obviously. Um, there's a lot of carbs in there. Now, 
You don't have to follow the ketogenic diet and do this to be a perfectly healthy, happy, fit person. I'm sorry, lots of messages coming in. I'm just making sure everything's okay if you hear that dinging. Um, so if you don't need to do this, don't. But I have a feeling if you're here listening to this, you have at least questions about it. Um, but do what works for you. If you like vegetables, eat them. You don't have to eat vegetables. And fruit, sorry, fruit is sugar. So that's a non-starter. Berries are different than fruit. Berries are a little bit different. The, you know, a strawberry is different than an orange, for sure. You know, berries have essentially no skin that you have to work through. Think of it this way. Nature makes it hard for you to get to the sugary things. Think of a pineapple. Nature really wants you to work hard to get to that sweet stuff because it shouldn't be something you eat all the time. A berry, you can walk by and pick it off a, you know, a bush or a bramble and eat it. So berries are a little bit different. They're not unlimited, but they're different than general fruit. Okay, so vegetables, constipation, fiber, chill. It's okay. I go many days without eating any vegetables. When I do eat vegetables, it's fairly limited. But the rule of thumb, and you don't have to micromanage this, if you're going to eat vegetables, make sure they're non-starchy. And that's, in general, vegetables that grow above the ground. Vegetables that grow below the ground are below the ground because that's their job is to be there storing sugar for the greens that are above the ground. But in general, that non-starchy vegetables, if you're going to eat them, limit them to something about the size of your fist or about one cup pre-cooked a day. And if you're going to have salad greens, not seven cups, about two maximum. Um, but don't stress over it. It's a very common question. Now, hair. Some people get really upset and scared because they notice their hair will start to thin, seemingly, or when they start the ketogenic diet. When you change your um, when you change your dietary intake in any way, if you went with low fat, your hair is your hair is like the canary in the coal mine, but not in a negative way. It simply is one of the first things impacted by any kind of change or trauma. You can have physical trauma that will impact your hair. It's called telogen effluvium. It's temporary. Um, if you're under anesthesia, your hair is going to fall out a little bit more and then it gets back to normal. If you have emotional trauma, this can happen. Stress can do it. Changing your dietary program in any way can do it. It is temporary. Now, we are all in charge of our own health care and bodies. If you know that something's not right, you know, alopecia is one thing. That is, that is different than your hair thinning out from telogen effluvium. And also keep in mind, our hair, our hair sheds all the time. All the time. And it'll do it generally in zones. You know, over here at one time and maybe over here, uh, you know, the next month and over here. And then it kind of sometimes they overlap and then all of a sudden all the zones, it's like an eclipse. Everything happens at the same time. It is temporary. Uh, it, you know, if you're on certain medications, just make sure that you're asking yourself questions. But don't freak out. Your hair is, there's nothing about this nutrition protocol that will negatively impact your hair. As a matter of fact, it's very high in, in the B vitamins which are for good for hair and nails. So, uh, my hair has always been kind of see-through and I'll say my hair is probably, it's no, the hair itself is no thicker. I have very fine hair, but I would say it's denser now than it used to be. And um, what was the other thing I was gonna talk about? Yeah, oh, skin, skin. Okay, um, I'm not trying to give you TMI. And I can only tell you my experience. I've lost, actually I'm, I'm about 115 pounds off, 100 something off my highest weight. I would have expected to have really 
hanging skin. I'm five one. So that's like one and a third pounds per level per inch of height over my entire body of weight loss. And let's face it, it's mostly fat loss. So I would have expected to have folds of skin, hanging skin. My I've had two medical doctors who were examining me for different things. So where's your loose skin? I can usually tell someone who's lost 100 pounds a quarter of a mile away with their clothes on. I don't have folds of skin. I have crepey skin. Um, but I'm 59 years old. Uh, I've had three children. The second one was 10 pounds. I was probably going to have crepey skin on my belly anyway, under the best circumstances. Now, why is this? I don't know. I'm very pleased with my skin as for what it is. You know, I like fewer wrinkles, but what are you going to do? Um, and I see someone talking about collagen. You know, Amanda, I'm not so sure about that. I think that's a coincidence. I don't, I don't think that's proven. A lot of people say put collagen in for skin and hair. Maybe I don't think, I just don't think there are any reliable tests about that. Um, so, My skin situation could be, I you know, it, it's three years. It, it, I over the course of three years, I lost the weight. That's normal. It's not a fast rate. It's not a you know. I'm not going to call it a slow rate. I'm going to call it a normal, gradual weight uh, rate. Shoot, after the first 35 pounds, I was so thrilled. I didn't care. I and I felt so much better. But anyway, so maybe it's because. I didn't lose it, you know, as some people do with bariatric surgery, they lose a tremendous amount of weight in a few months. That was not my experience. It could be genetics. It is not autophagy, as far as I'm concerned, because I don't fast. I know a lot of people immediately go to that, where it's some theory about the cells kind of essentially consuming themselves. I don't fast. I uh, Only in that if I'm not hungry, I don't eat. But I'm not arbitrarily not eating. Um, so loose skin, everyone's situation might be different. I've heard from more people who've been pleased with the condition of their skin, even after losing a great amount of weight. Keep in mind, this is a very anti-inflammatory way of eating. And our skin, just as our Cells, you know, and our organs and joints and everything can benefit from reduced inflammation. Our skin is our largest organ. And a, a woman from Duke who came to one of the Durham uh, support group meetings, uh, an aesthetician, she's not a doctor, but she said she has a, a theory. She has no research on it, but having seen many of Dr. Westman's patients at Duke after they've lost weight, that's her kind of, she wonders if that's not it, the anti-inflammatory properties of it. Another thing I'd say, if you are more concerned about having loose skin than feeling better and coming off of medications and staving off type 2 diabetes, then, then don't do this. Uh, I'm not trying to, to sound um, like it's an easy answer, but I would have taken loose skin any day. If it had become a tripping hazard, I would have put my pennies together and saved up for some surgery. It's not a tripping hazard, by the way. You know, loose, you know, I always think back. I had a friend whose husband was a chain smoker and he gave up smoking, cold turkey. This was years and years ago. She was older than I. And her husband put on like 25 pounds. And she said, oh my God, I'm so concerned. He's getting fat. I'd rather he go back to smoking than get fat. When people say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to lose skin. I don't want loose skin. I'd rather stay fat. It's a choice. I'd rather have loose skin and be healthy. But that's, that's the, my take on these three things. Veggies, you don't have to eat them. If you are going to eat them, keep them limited to non-starchy vegetables. Hair. If, it, if you notice it kind of shedding more, it's not, and you're not going bald, it's you're shedding. If you're shedding more, be cool. It can happen. The 
The only time it really could be bad is if you are on a very protein restricted diet, okay? Which if you're following a well-formulated ketogenic diet, you're not on a protein restricted diet. You, I don't know how much protein you should eat. I don't know how much I do eat. It's kind of self-regulating if you listen to your body. Someone popped in with radishes are root vegetables. Are they okay? Can I give you a word of advice? Google is your friend. Not every food item can fit on a sheet of paper. Someone asked about is tilapia okay? It's not on the list. It's fish. You can eat it. It's fish. You can eat it. Google, I have no idea. We don't eat radishes. Google, how many, you know, oh, how about this? Alexa, how many carbs are in a cup of radishes? The Dietary Guidelines for Americans recommends that carbohydrates oh, make up 45... That's okay. Forget about Alexa. She plugged so, into the daily... Alexa, off. Dummy. Um, anyway, Google it. And, and I am going to say something um, about the Keto After 40 group. Um, people who hold and make a photograph of the front of a package and say, are these okay? I'm going to start being a little strict on that. It's not the front of the package that matters. It's the back of the package. Look at the back of the package and look at the carbs. Total. Do not subtract out the fiber. And if it's high in carbs, it's not okay. We need to use our brains and put a little energy in this. We need to have a little bit of our own skin in the game in this. It's not hard. It's simple to follow. But you do have to answer some of your own questions. Janice, why are you laughing? Oh, yeah. Alexa got it right. No, she didn't. She said 45% of your calories should come from carbs. That's the American di uh, guidelines. Excuse me. Atticus has to go out. So, moral of the story, don't sweat it. Don't, don't sweat whether you're going to be constipated. Don't anticipate problems. And try to, try to not listen to all those around you who might say you're going to die very soon if you eat this diet. Okay? And another word of advice, because I've seen several posts about this and people message me. What do I do? I, people, you know, are impressed with my weight loss. When I tell them when I do it, they give me a hard time. So don't even ask what you should do about that. There's nothing you should do about that. For one thing, nobody gets a vote on what you eat. It's none of their business. You don't have to share what you're doing if you don't want to. And if they ask a question and you give them an answer and they give you pushback and say, well, you asked me, I told you. Let's move on to another topic. You don't have to, to convert the world. And don't be upset if someone says, oh, that's terrible. You're going to, your cholesterol is going to go up and you're going to faint dead away. So, chill. The word for today is chill. Chill about your hair. Chill about the constipation. Chill about the vegetables. Chill about the, what was the other thing I keep forgetting? Skin. Just try to feel better. Try to feel better physically. And you'll start to see, you start to feel better emotionally and mentally. And step away from the computer. I mean, right now, click it off, right in mid-sentence with me if you want. Go out and get on with your life and quit thinking about food. Quit thinking about food so much. Keep your carbohydrate intake 20 grams or fewer a day. By the way, zero is fewer. Five is fewer than 20. Seven is fewer. Eat fatty sources of protein, even if they're not on the list. Let's use our education. If it's an animal product, you pretty much can eat it. Just make sure you eat the fat that comes with it. Don't try to get the leanest cut of anything. Don't peel the skin off the chicken. If you don't like chicken skin, don't eat it. You're not compelled to eat anything on this. And don't eat if you're not hungry. Sometimes that means you eat one meal a day. I haven't had a full meal. Well, I had a full meal this morning. But before that, it had been Thursday afternoon. And I went and worked out at the gym yesterday. I just wasn't hungry until this morning. Don't worry about it. Chill, man. 
Okay, it is very disconcerting on my screen. So I have no idea whether I'm still coming through or not because something went weird with the screen. Um, okay, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna look at some of these questions if you don't mind. If you don't mind, because I would like to answer them if I'm in a position to do so. Okay, let me get back over here. Um, Thank you. Thank oh, I do a, a couple of updates. If you're coming to the Durham support group meeting on Tuesday, the 6th, um, it's great. We, the last two months, we've been over capacity, and the Hilton, has. We, I've been in communication with them um, actually since December. And guess what? Because we've, we've had overflow crowds for the open restaurant space where we've been meeting, which wasn't a big deal before because it was, you know, a few tables of people. We have a room. Uh, we're getting a room. So we're getting a room at the Hilton. So as you, the buffet will still be available. You don't have to buy it. The keto-friendly buffet will still be available in the same spot where it's been. But you'll have to carry your plate into the meeting room. And um, I'm hoping to have someone there that will help direct people. So um, we're, we'll have, and that room has capacity as well, but I think we're going to be fine on that. So that'll be nice. We'll have a door and um, we can hopefully hear everything that's going on. I am sorry about all the messages popping in. So that's one thing. So that's good. The Go Keto with Casey Roadshow event um, is going to be a lot of fun March 16th, 17th, 18th. But the meat of the program, Dr. Westman and Jackie Eberstein will be available for a wine reception on Friday evening and, a, and straight on through brunch. On Sunday, the program itself is on Saturday the 17th, and then we're all going to try to, for those who want to, get together uh, for lunch on Saturday at our favorite Mexican restaurant. We'll have room for ourselves. So if you're a patron, don't forget there is a discount code you can use, but it's going to be a lot of fun. There'll be giveaways. and this, this is not a conference like the big ones, which are awesome conferences, and I've learned from each one I've attended. But I really wanted something where the real life people, there's going to be, there's a portion of the program, one thing, there'll be question and answer the whole time. And Dr. Westman has a presentation, Jackie has a presentation, I'll have a presentation. But mostly it's going to be about real life people sharing their, their successes, their struggles. Are they just starting? Letting them say, this is, this is where I was two years ago and now I'm off of all these medications. That, I think, the participants are going to be the stars of the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. So looking forward to that. And I think there was one other thing I wanted to talk about. And now I can't recall. Oh, uh, excuse me. Atticus needs to come in. Sorry about that. I just found out that if you use a code KC10, C-A-S-E-Y-1-0, you get a 10% discount if you order through my link off my blog for Adapt products. I don't use Adapt products, but I endorse them. I don't use them because I don't need them because I work from my kitchen. But they are very good convenience foods for people who are going to be, you know, I always come back to air travel. My husband will travel sometimes. It's a 16-hour day of traveling from here to Columbia. And it really suits him to have a couple of bars in his pocket. Uh, if he's riding his bike, he's going to go on a 50-mile bike ride. That might be a good thing. Whatever. And I didn't know that you could get a 10% discount by using that code. So again, if you go to caseydurango.com, my blog, on the right-hand sidebar, there is an Adapt logo. Scroll down and see it. Click there. If you're going to order, use the code KC10. I didn't know. It's the only food product that I would endorse. Um, Dr. Westman endorsed. I've spoken with the... with. Um, with his business partner in this several times, and they always prefer you to eat real food. They say never substitute this for real food. If you have the opportunity to eat real food, it's to help with compliance. So there. Um, ooh, someone said the word fruit concerns me. What are you talking about? Who has the word fruit? Okay. I will, um, I will ask if anyone has... Again, my screen is totally frozen. I have no idea what's going on. I'm afraid to refresh it. Um, but does anyone have anything they want to share? 
Thank you, Janara. That's a very nice compliment. Um, oh, is it Leona? Is is there anyone here with heartburn? You know, most people, many people find that heartburn or acid reflux is improved with this. There's a, you know what? Our bodies talk to us a lot, and we've become so inured to the messages over the years that we just ignore them. We just took it for granted. Oh, I have heartburn. That's me. Ooh, I have flatulence. That's me. Oh, um, my joints hurt. That's me. Oh, I'm breaking out in a skin rash all the time. That's me. And so many of us find once we go from feeding our bodies what it doesn't want and it's been screaming at us to stop it, things start to clear up. It's fantastic. Um, <laughs> Uh, Violet Taylor, any chance of a road show to Australia? Yeah, get me there, sister, and I'm there. I would love it. There are a lot of folks that I know that are from uh, and, uh, Patreon. I do want to give a plug to, to my patrons from Patreon. To be really honest, the patrons on Patreon make it possible for me to continue on with what I'm doing. It's a wonderful group. It's a wonderful community. Um, there is patron-only content, and there are patron-only rewards depending on your level of pledge, and I want to thank the patrons um, who do that, and I'm telling you, they make it possible for me to continue on. So thank you very much, and I know some of you are here. Um, my acid reflux and heartburn are gone, thanks to keto. I'm telling you, it, you know, it's not the cure for everything. I'm still really short. You know, but I tell you, it's pretty good. The idea of sweeteners comes up a lot. Dr. Westman has said, and I tend to agree with him. Isn't, isn't that big of me to uh, agree with a world expert? The whole discussion about sweeteners is a big distra distraction and very possibly instigated by the sugar industry, which is really under a microscope now. A lot of stuff about the sugar industry is coming up from over the last 50 years. We use Splenda. People are appalled. Um, hey, Stacy, how are you feeling, Stacy? Stacy Randall from, can I, can, Stacy, can I share what we did on the live stream yesterday, the patron-only live stream, and you asked a question or you made a statement about cravings? Can I share that? I don't want to Put, I don't want to put anything out there. Um, okay. I'm look, Okay, so going so quickly. Okay, Stacey, I'm hoping that it's okay. You said you're... Okay, go ahead. Thank you. So, Stacey, we have a, on Fridays, we have a patron-only live stream. And Stacey, who's a patron, shared that she was going through some stressful times. Stuff happens. Life happens. She was really having cravings and wanted to know what she could have for the cravings. Now, this struck me, because it's a common question, you know. Cravings, but I stepped back and I hadn't really thought about it before then. So what if you have a craving? Doesn't mean you have to give in to it, right? A craving is a craving, but it's not an involuntary response. Your body will not automatically must have whatever you're craving. Particularly if you're talking, I'm, I'm, I'm stressed out and I'm craving... I don't know, ice cream. You know what you have to do? You have to plow through. I mean, do what you want to do. But let's ask ourselves, if you are having a craving, you think triggered by stress or trauma or anxiety, and let's just say it's ice cream, and you finish the ice cream, even so-called keto ice cream. Meh. Don't trust it. So you finish it. Are you really going to feel less less anxious? Less stressed? Or are you now just going to have anxiety, stress, and guilt, and feeling like a doofus? Is it going to help you? Remember, if hunger is not the problem, food is not the solution. I'm going to tell you, 
I'm anxious. I'm having a little stress. Well, I'm a little anxious today. I've, I've struggled a little bit today. Um, just this morning. It's just what happens. It's just what happens, right? Nothing momentous, nothing. But what I didn't do was have the thought that if I just ate X, Y, Z, I'd be less anxious. I ate my breakfast because I'd been a day and a half since I'd eaten. I was hungry. But I didn't say, oh, let me, you know, dive into something. So keep that in mind. Let's, let's quit telling ourselves that I can't do this because I'm addicted to, and then you can fill in the blanks. It's harder for me because I was raised in a family that did X, Y, Z. Guess what? We all did. We all were raised that way. Every single one of us was raised that way. Every culture is based on carbohydrate. We were all there. We're all addicted to carbs because that's the way we're wired. Because there is supposed to be an emergency fuel. Glucose is supposed to be an emergency fuel. You know, it's supposed to be a only break this glass in case of emergency fuel. There's never an emergency. We just, we just broke the glass and pulled out the fire hose and keep sloshing the stuff down. So there you go. If that makes sense. We're all addicted to something. Our brain, because our brains will tell us to. But once you get through a few days of being conscientious about it, you find out not only are you not addicted, which is too strong a word to use for most people, you, you lose the cravings for it. And after a while, you don't even like the idea of some of that food. You go, you look and you go, ugh, gross. So let's not say, but I'm having a craving. Well, it's not, does not immediately have to follow that you give into the craving, right? I mean, would you let your kids get away with that? I really had a craving to cut algebra. No, you would not allow that. <laughs> your, significant, your significant other might have many cravings. But you would not say, oh, it's a craving. Go ahead. Go for it. No. And you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Live stream freezes. I don't know what's going on here. I'm so sorry. <gasps> Rachel Vaughn O'Brien just became a patron. Thank you. And I'm sorry about the live stream. I think what's happening is when people making are making comments one way or the other, Something pops up on my screen and it freezes me. Not comments underneath, and I don't even know where these comments are coming from. It might be comments from Keto I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, I'm going to start to wrap this up. And, yeah, uh, Helena, absolutely. Recovering alcoholics have cravings too, but if you're going to give in, you're no longer in recovery. Right? right? But, but don't take this as scolding. Just because it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. Just because I was at the right place at the right, right frame of mind on the right day to hear the right message delivered by the right person and it spoke to me doesn't mean that everyone else is as miserable as I was. I don't want anyone to be that miserable as I was in that day, inside my own head. My life is great. Most days. No one's life is perfect all the time. But my life is pretty good. But I was not happy in my head. Certainly not happy in my skin. So I don't want anyone else to be at that starting point. Skip over that if you can. Okay. Someone said, yes, she has. What have I done? Okay, I don't know what I did. I was just ready, yeah. So, you know, don't beat yourself up if you strumble, trademark, a word we came up with in Patreon. It's when you, one day I was trying to talk before I had enough coffee. And I, was, I was trying to say if you struggle and then you stumble. Because sometimes you can struggle and then you don't stumble. But sometimes you struggle and then you stumble and that's a strumble. But I, I, the word just came out that way. I didn't mean to. If you strumble, you know, there's no point in rehashing it. But also don't say, it's okay if I 
Strombel 15 times every month. You know, then, then you need to adjust your thinking. So we do ha all have a, a level of self-responsibility for our actions. But guilt is a useless, useless emotion. Okay, Bethany, I'll have a key to wonderful weekend. I did talk about um, thinning hair. You'll have to listen back. I did talk about it. Janet DeFilio Adams, thinning hair. I talked about it. It's temporary. It happens. It happens when any you ch whenever it can happen when you change your dietary habits. Either way, low fat, low carb, whatever. If you have a physical trauma, a mental, uh, emotional trauma, mental trauma. If you go under anesthesia. And sometimes it's just the zones of your hair are just shedding all at the same time. But I have spoken about it. I spoke about it at the beginning. Okay. Yes, yeah, Strumble. I like that word. I need to trademark that. Strumble Stillskins. I think someone might have said that on. Strumble Stillskins. Might have said that on Patreon. Okay. Thank you very much, guys. I do have uh, a session in just a little bit with someone. Um... And I want to thank you for allowing me into your homes again. Sorry for any technical issues. Like I said, I'd fire my, my crew, but then I'd have to lay myself off. Um, and if you can make it to the Durham Support Group meeting on Tuesday with Dr. Eric Westman and myself moderating, it should be a, it has been a really good turnout. I learn something new every time. We'll have a private room. The Go Keto with Casey Roadshow in March. If you have any questions about it, let me know. If you're a patron, you do get a discount. And if you want a discount on Adapt products, the code is KC10. Who knew? But you have to follow the link that's from my website, which is kcdurango.com. Look in the sidebar and click to Adapt. Again, I don't use them, but I endorse them. It's the only product I would let my husband have if he, if he needed a convenience food. None of those others would I do. Okay, guys. Um, thank you so much. Talk to you next weekend, I hope. And let's hope we're supposed to get snow again. Oh, well, we'll see what happens. Thanks a lot, guys. I truly do appreciate it.